Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. From beautiful San Francisco, California, at the Moscone Center, the site of Next 18, a three-day interactive conference where attendees from around the world have come together to share big ideas and make the cloud stronger. I'm Reda Meyer, a developer advocate for Google. And I'm Stephanie Wong, a customer engineer for Google Cloud. It's great to have you with us from more than 100 countries around the world as we hear from cloud leaders, customers, and partners. Over the next three days, our live show team will be your eyes and ears on the ground here at Next18. You'll have a front row seat for all the keynotes, spotlight sessions, fireside chats, and our live show. And that's not all. We'll be recapping the main keynotes every day, bringing you special guest interviews with expert Googlers, industry leaders, and Google Cloud customers. Our showcase reporters will take us around Moscone to see all the cool cloud product demos and interactive experiences that aren't to be missed. Coming up, Google Cloud CEO Diane Green kicks things off with the main keynote, building a cloud for everyone. After that, Stephanie and I will be joined by a special guest to recap the major announcements. And later, industry leaders will share their stories on how they're putting the cloud to use. For those of you who can't make it here in person, we've got you covered. We're live streaming all of this and more right here on g.co slash nextonair. Also, make sure to join the conversation across all social media platforms using the hashtag GoogleNext18. We're about 10 minutes away from the keynote, so let's head over inside to the main stage for a pre-show with DJ Dren and Angel. And remember, stick around after the keynote for a recap with special guests and a whole lot more. Enjoy the show. Building a cloud for everyone. That was the major theme of today's keynote. Hi everyone and welcome back to the next live show and thank you for joining us. I'm Rena Meyer, a developer advocate for Google. And I'm Stephanie Wong, a customer engineer for Google Cloud. Reino and I will be here with you over the next three days, giving you an insider's view of Next18. We'll be recapping all the main keynotes and the exciting product announcements. We'll also take you on a tour of the showcase and interactive product experiences. Plus, you'll hear inspirational cloud stories from customers and developers all over the world. Now, before we discuss the keynote that we just saw, here's today's program lineup on g.co slash nextonair. Coming up here on this channel, we've got a fireside chat on healthcare and life sciences, the customer innovation keynote with business and tech leaders discussing how the cloud has transformed their companies, and a spotlight session on Google Cloud Serverless. Over on the featured Spotlight Sessions channel, we'll have talks from Intel, Cisco, and a session on bringing you the future of cloud. Joining us now is our colleague, Quentin Hardy, head of editorial for Google Cloud to talk all about the exciting news that was just announced. Welcome, Quentin. Oh, it's great to be here. Now, what about today's announcement? What does it really tell us about the current state of enterprise computing? Oh, well, you know, obviously in those talks you heard so much about the momentum. We have so many customers and all these verticals going on and momentum in different areas like AI for 21 million developers who couldn't access it before or what Urs talked about with getting the cloud to you so that all these assets can come online. Or Prabhakar talking about how more and more customers, the momentum inside G Suite is so strong because people want to be able to collaborate wherever they are. I think for 20 years, consumer has really been the place to be, particularly like mobile apps. But the level of involvement and the level of innovation that is now reaching because of cloud computing might be flipping that around and you're about to see an exceptional amount of innovation inside the enterprise as more and more computational power and more and more AI applications and more and more opportunities to collaborate and create at a kind of unprecedented pace just enable people to do more. Yeah, absolutely. So we hear oftentimes that the cloud is about getting cheap servers. After that, what well, that's else true. is the big deal? <laughs> well, that's true. It's cheap. And cheap is fun and cheap is good. But really, it's about being able to scale and realize things at a level that's appropriate for you. And one of the things that Urs did in his talk was talk about being able to take cloud-type capabilities to have um, security all across in a uniform way, to have identity policies, who's allowed in here and what can they do, to have developers who are inside your company and outside developers all work at the same level. 
That's something the cloud enables you to do. And what Google announced today amounts to bringing those capabilities really to the enterprise, your on-prem computers, inside the cloud, your hybrid environments, more and more places. That's, that's really interesting. It sounds like there's a lot of opportunities uh, for people uh, who are going to be building on our cloud. Can you drill into that a little bit more detail? Like, where do you see the, these opportunities leading to? Oh, well, for starts, obviously, you know, the idea of being able to manage better wherever you're computing means you're going to lower your admin costs. That, first off, saves money. Great, you can apply that somewhere else. It also means developers can stop doing kind of boring work and get themselves involved in more and more interesting projects. And when they get there, boom, there's this new auto ML in the cloud. This means you don't have to be some PhD data scientist to do artificial intelligence work. 21 million developers around the world can start to do AI work in a way that's meaningful and they can learn from it and they can grow with it. So the imagination is liberated in the best way technology can help people. That's amazing and it's great to hear that we're really giving and empowering users with our technology. How else does that really change the landscape? Oh, it does so much. I mean, in some ways this is about enterprise, but in some ways this is about where the world is headed right now. I, last year, there was a statistic about connected devices and I did the math and we are, now have at least one connected device for every square mile of inhabitable land on the planet. And that's only grown since. So what that means is, you know, wherever you are in our lifetimes and certainly in our children's lifetimes, wherever you are, you will be steps away from a nearly infinite amount of computation you know, to use in whatever way you want and to improve on your product, your health, however you want to organize your life. So yes, this is an enterprise company, but business and commerce is the way typically a lot of civilization moves forward or better government is the way civilization moves forward or individual empowerment is the way civilization moves forward. So, you know, that sounds kind of large, that's because it is large, you know, and it's okay to be proud about that. Absolutely. Now, I hope I don't get into trouble for this. We don't usually talk about what's in the future at Google, but is there anything... I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, can, you give us, can you give us a little hint? Like, well, you know, you this, know, obviously, this is where we're at. let's just think about the shape of this. Today, you've got big people giving big visions, and tomorrow, the people that stand behind them doing day-to-day -day work, and the thousands of people who stand behind them enacting products, we'll start to talk about how these visions are made real. These aren't just products, these are proof points. And watch us, see, you know, hold our feet to the fire. Are we building to what we say we're building? And tomorrow we'll start delivering on that, I think. Absolutely. All right, well, thanks very much, Quentin. We really appreciate you giving us the time. It's great to be here. Uh, now, throughout the week, we'll be featuring stories on the inspiring ways people around the world are using Google Cloud to transform their businesses and make the world a better place. First up is SoulCycle. 12 years ago, the founders envisaged an inclusive fitness experience that was about community, not competition. Today, SoulCycle has 88 studios across North America. Check out how this fitness company creatively uses GCP to be more nimble and to deepen its connection with riders. SoulCycle for me is about empowering the rider as a person. It becomes that moment that is really truly yours. You can celebrate yourself, maybe question yourself. The lights are dark, there's music playing in the background, it's candle lit, it's 45 minutes. It's an intense ride. At SoulCycle, when we're building technology, we always say start with the rider. How does this technology benefit the rider and benefit the experience that they're gonna have? You don't traditionally think of SoulCycle as a tech company, but at its core, everything that we do is powered by tech. What we care the most about is that our riders are engaging with us and that the software that we're building allows them to do that. Google Cloud allows us to focus more on application and software development than on managing our infrastructure. It's a huge deal. I love the fact that some of the groundwork has been done for me to the point where I get to focus on the things that I really need to. How do I elevate a studio experience? How do I make a rider's ride better? One of the big changes that we're working on right now is mobilizing our front desk. 
We're rolling out a few studios where we've got pixel books running all the interactions from booking a rider's first ride, managing a wait list, helping someone buying some soul cycle clothing. That allows you to increase that interaction with a rider. Building our corporate partnerships function of the business on GCP is one of our first major initiatives that will be rider facing. We're automating not only the sign-up process, but the management of rides that are purchased, and also the follow-up. Our three-person team was spending all of their time booking bikes manually by hand, and we decided that it would make a lot more sense to build a tool that will allow the corporate partners to do that themselves. Now, with GCP, our salespeople can work on developing the relationships with their existing clients and new clients, and not focused on manual data entry. That's been a big benefit for us. The way that I want to make technology work here at SoulCycle is to make it transparent as much as possible and make a SoulCycle studio a sanctuary for you. Let's focus on the people first. Just like we're thinking about our riders all the time, Google is thinking about their customers. We trust that they're going to be building the products and services that will benefit us in the future, and that leaves us to focus on the products and services that benefit our riders. That's where we win. Interesting to see how SoulCycle is integrating GCP into their business. Yeah, absolutely. Now it's time for the first Spotlight Sessions. Coming up next on this channel is Hybrid Migration, and over on the Featured Spotlight Sessions channel, you can see how Salesforce uses Google Cloud to transform productivity. Stick around right after, because Rado and I will be here with a lot more from Next18. Welcome back to Next Live. I'm Rado Meyer. Google Cloud Platform serves a lot of industries, including healthcare. The team at the Colorado Center for Personalized Medicine is improving human health one massive data set at a time. Using GCP's HIPAA compliance oriented computing, storage, and big data solutions, the group is analyzing patient data in entirely new ways. Your genome is probably the single most identifying unique thing about you. The goal of personalized medicine is about gathering as much data as we can on people to help us understand them better. In the research study through the Colorado Center for Personalized Medicine, we're trying to leverage those differences in our discoveries. For each patient who undergoes genotyping, we get about 2.1 million pieces of genetic data. What we need is the computational resources to make sure that we will never run out of storage space or that we will never pay for storage space that we're not using. Underlying all of those challenges are the questions of security. It needs to be stored somewhere that is HIPAA compliant, even if it's de-identified. And our solution was to move that data onto Google Cloud Platform. It gave us a way that was cost-effective and highly scalable. And if that was all it had given us, we would have been perfectly pleased. What we're finding is that that partnership is enabling us to drive to the next level of innovation and advanced analytics. Google BigQuery as a data warehouse, that's our beating heart. We gather data from lots of different places. We have to match up patient records. That activity took about eight hours to run. We re-implemented that logic in Google BigQuery and it finishes now in about 15 minutes. Through personalized medicine, we can give doctors tools to make the best diagnoses and treatment decisions. With Google Cloud Platform, we are chasing down every opportunity to improve human health by bringing this data together and analyzing it in ways that have never been analyzed before. Really fascinating way that CCPM is leveraging Google Cloud Platform. Switching gears now to a topic that I'm passionate about, helping customers problem solve their key technical issues. We found many of our customers have the same questions. Here are the top five most asked questions answered. And our first question is, what exactly is a customer engineer? Great question. In a sentence, customer engineers exist to help our customers transform, evolve, and yes, engineer their business applications on Google Cloud. We do that by meeting with customers one-on-one -on -one to understand their current state and where they'd like to be in the future. We then work with customers to navigate the best path to get them from today to tomorrow. We help identify the right technical solution within GCP, assemble a proof of concept, collaborate with them on the proper architecture, 
and design a migration plan to safely and securely migrate their data to its destination. Our ultimate goal is to help customers be successful on Google Cloud Platform. And we really own that end-to-end -end technical relationship between Google Cloud and you. That's how we roll. Question number two, if I want to run my application on GCP, how do I choose which product to use? Hmm. That's a tough one, because honestly, it depends. I know that seems like a cop-out answer, but to recommend where you should be running your application, it's best to fully understand your application requirements. GCP offers four primary means of application hosting, those being Compute Engine, Kubernetes Engine, App Engine, and Cloud Functions. Google Compute Engine, or GCE for short, is our infrastructure as a service offering, which allows you to create fully managed and customizable VMs for running your apps. If you're interested in running a containerized application, Google Kubernetes Engine, or GKE, might be the best option because GKE is our fully managed and hardened container orchestration and management service. If managing infrastructure isn't your jam, check out App Engine, which is Google's platform as a service solution and lets developers completely focus on building great applications without the management overhead of dealing with servers or configuration deployments. Finally, Cloud Functions is Google's event-driven and serverless platform that only runs your code in response to event-driven triggers. The best news is you can also pick a combination of computing offerings, so you don't have to just rely on one. Hey, I got one. Now that we know about application hosting, my app obviously needs storage. Question three, how do I decide where to store my data? Well, there are many fully managed offerings here for that data that's either structured, unstructured, transactional, or relational. Persistent Disk offers block storage that's suitable for VMs and any kind of containers like Google Compute Engine or Kubernetes Engine, as you mentioned. Cloud Storage is used for object storage and can store streaming multimedia or custom data analytics pipelines or even backups and disaster recovery. And then Cloud Bigtable is a NoSQL wide column database that's suitable for real time access and any kind of analytics workloads that need low latency and high throughput read write access. Cloud Data Store is a NoSQL document database for web and mobile applications. And Cloud SQL is a managed MySQL and Postgres database service. Cloud Spanner is a mission critical relational database service with transactional consistency and global scale. And Cloud BigQuery is a fully managed enterprise data warehouse with SQL syntax and real time response for ad hoc querying. Lastly, we have a number of databases and storage used for Firebase, our mobile and web app hosting platform. Oh, hey, a penny on the floor. I think we took a wrong turn. <laughs> Oh, well, onward with question number four. Everyone is talking about machine learning these days, but I just don't know where and how to get started. What's the best way to get started with ML if not a data scientist or robot? Well, Google wants to democratize AI and make it accessible and useful for enterprises and developers. We offer ready-to-use models so you can focus on the application and not the science. Using our machine learning REST APIs is quite simple. Google Cloud provides fully trained machine learning models for vision, video intelligence, speech, translation, natural language processing. And these are extremely easy to use if you are a developer familiar with REST. So the ML APIs are pre-trained on Google datasets and ready to go. Anyone that knows how to call a REST API can integrate with them from their applications. If you want to train your own datasets, Instead of relying on Google's data, then Cloud AutoML allows you to create models specific to your domain. No programming experience or machine learning experience is required. You simply identify your training data and labels, and Cloud AutoML does the rest. Last, we have the world's most popular ML framework, TensorFlow. And this is available as a managed service called CloudML. This is for those with theoretical machine learning knowledge and those who are comfortable writing code. Check out the blog post, Learn TensorFlow and Deep Learning without a PhD, if you're a developer interested in this option. Sounds like Google has a lot of experience with big data and machine learning. Question five, if my business is running on GCP, does Google analyze the data I've stored uh, in the cloud? Not at all. Many people are concerned with their data, and privacy is a big deal for Google, as well as every other company. Our focus is on making sure only you have access to your data. Not only does Google not read or analyze your data, we also encrypt everything and give you the ability to use your own encryption keys to make sure you're the only one who can read it. This applies to all of the Google Cloud services.
Thanks so much to our customer engineer team. Coming up next, here on the next live show, we have a fireside chat on the future of healthcare. And over on the other channel, we have a session with special guests Intel. Stick around, you're watching the next live show from Moscow and Center in San Francisco. Welcome back to Next Live. I'm Stephanie Wong, a Purina Sinha Group Product Manager for Google Cloud joins us now. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for having me, Stephanie. So we actually know that you have a spotlight session named Bringing the View the Future of the Cloud today. Before we jump into that, I'd actually love to get your thoughts on the main keynote from today. I thought the main keynote was excellent. There were three things that stuck out at me. One, just all of the proof points around enterprise readiness in Diane's talk. And then the number of customers that are speaking at this conference with us, it's really a testament not just to our technology, but also to our sales readiness and our professional services capability. Secondly, I really enjoyed the talk by SAP and by Cisco, our closest partners. Uh, and then lastly, close to my heart, of course, is Orz's keynote where he announced GKE on-prem. That's truly breakthrough technology, the first of its kind by any cloud provider. So now, we actually would love to hear a little bit more about your spotlight, bringing you the future of the cloud. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, so I often get the question, you know, Kubernetes has been so successful, what's after Kubernetes? And it's a tough question because indeed, you know, whether you're playing a game or watching the election or shopping at a, at a retail outlet on the web, you know, you're a user of Kubernetes. So it's really had far-reaching impact and it's hard to beat that. But uh, Ken Goldberg and I will be talking about what's next in our spotlight session. We'll be talking about the integrated stack between Istio and Kubernetes and how to run that in a heterogeneous multi-cluster environment between on-prem and cloud. That's new and I think it's something that is revolutionary for customers because it allows them to modernize where they are with what they have and move to cloud at their own pace. We will be doing three live demos to demonstrate how far we are on the spectrum with the technology and the product. Very exciting. So as a group product manager for Kubernetes, how do you see our managed Kubernetes offering differing from the others that might be out there? Yeah, I think that the game has really changed. It's not just about a managed Kubernetes offering. It's really about a full stack solution that allows your developers to be productive, building uh, differentiated applications for your, for your business, and allows your operators to control the environment at scale across on-prem and cloud. Kubernetes is a piece of that, but then Istio and all of the solutions, serverless, machine learning, uh, CICD, the solutions that are built on top of that for hybrid, that's really now the new playing ground. So our viewers, as they might know, um, Kubernetes is open source. Why do you think open source is important to Google and what are we doing to contribute to the space? Open source is a great source of innovation and it's a great source of user intimacy. Open source is software that a user can take and make it their own and it's something where what they see is what they get. Working in open source for Google and, and, and personally for me brings me closer to the user. It allows me to partner with them, to understand them and vice versa to build a relationship. That's why we value open source so much. Excellent. So for someone who might be getting started in containerizing their environment, um, how can they get started with GKE? And is there a certain application development environment profile that GKE is best fit for? So GKE is really a general purpose platform. You can run any kind of application from, uh, of course, stateless web services to batch processing to machine learning to serverless applications to also uh, stateful services like uh, MySQL or you know, uh, stateful databases. Uh, the only requirement really is that you write your application in the form of microservices. And it doesn't have to be super granular, but it has to be somewhat uh, written in the way that it can run on a distributed architecture. That's how you get the maximal benefit from GKE. But on the whole, customers are using it across all industries, retail, um, uh, media, gaming, financial services, healthcare. It's a pretty general purpose platform. Well, I think that's exciting news for everybody else out there. I think that's all the time we have. So. Really appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much. Thank you. So please, everyone, check out our website, g.co slash nextonair, later today to watch Aperna's session, bringing you the future of cloud. Over to you, Rado. Thank you, Stephanie and Aparna. So throughout the next three days of Next 18, we'll be featuring showcase demonstrations and interactive experiences, including infrastructure and operations, 
application development and DevOps, collaboration and productivity, mobility and devices, data analytics, IoT, artificial intelligence, industry solutions, and security. And we have a team of Googlers on the ground who will be reporting on these demos. First up, we have Natalie Payuku, who's over at the Collaboration and Productivity Zone. Natalie? Thanks, Rato. We're here in the Collaboration and Productivity Zone, and we're joined here by Ashley today, and we're going to be talking about workplace transformation. Hi, how are you all? Good, thank you. How are you? Good, very good. All right, so let's start by telling us about G Suite. Great, so, um, well, G Suite, we took the apps you're probably already familiar with and you might use every day, yes. like Gmail and Docs and Calendar and Drive. We've taken all of those and optimized them to solve business needs. Great. And together, all of those bring you secure, smart, and simple collaboration in the cloud. And what's great about G Suite is that when you use G Suite, teams can actually work together better and faster. Great. And can you give us an example of this or a demonstration? Great. So, um, you know, there's a lot of businesses that are using G Suite, mm -hmm. uh, over 4 million actually, uh, you know, businesses like Airbus and PwC, Genentech, and they all use G Suite in slightly different ways. But I think you'd agree with me that all teams, regardless of industry, they all use G Suite to bring big ideas to life, yeah. uh, hence the, the light bulb here. Right. So uh, what we have in this showcase is um, a great way for teams um, to come in and to take a look at all of the different products we have in G Suite and use them all together to essentially bring a bright idea to life. Sounds very exciting. So can you tell us what's next in G Suite? Great. Um, well, today at Next, um, you might have heard uh, my colleague Prabhakar. He announced a lot of great new innovations yes. for G Suite. Uh, tomorrow we have a lot more in store, um, and we've seen a lot of great momentum for G Suite. Mm -hmm. So certainly a lot of uh, innovations that help make G Suite more secure, smart, and simple, and really help teams, you know, everything from helping you book meetings in a way where you don't actually have to do the booking yes. to looking at you know a spreadsheet and having our technology like explore and sheets figure out things for you or give insights to you and all you have to do is ask so we're always looking for ways to make your life easier um, at your job so you can really focus on what matters perfect and if people are hoping to find more about g suite where would they go Come to Next. Um, and also, <laughs> we have a great website, gsuite.google.com, and you can learn a lot more there. Or, um, you know, tell your, your uh, leadership team to get on G Suite if you're not already. Perfect. Well, thanks so much. Of and course. we're also joined here today by Indy. Welcome, Indy. How are you doing? Good, Natalie. How are you doing? Good morning. Really well. So, we're going to talk about custom apps and workflow. Yes. Can you start by giving us a little bit of an overview of what that means? Absolutely, absolutely. So, if you think about how G Suite works and how it helps people collaborate and be more productive, mm -hmm. on the back end, there's this whole infrastructure that G Suite is built on. And what we realized is there was a huge opportunity for us to expose it to our developers, yes. uh, just so they could also build apps for themselves and workflows that help them foster even more collaboration and productivity in the enterprise. So that's what we're trying to show over here. Perfect. And um, I can see you've got some screens set up there. What does um, a typical demonstration look like? Yeah, so today, I mean, so, so this whole week, we, we're going to be showing a bunch of like uh, demos that, in particular, AppMaker, which is our new yes. local developer environment for G Suite. So it helps basically companies build the business apps that they need, but build it by, 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 by themselves, right? So yes. have, you know, tap into the energy, the enthusiasm of like either, you know, sort of the, the power users, the administrators, or also like the enterprise IT, but really make it easy to build a custom app that looks and feels just as great as, as G Suite applications. Yes, and I, I hear one of the uh, reasons why customers love using AppMaker is just for the ease of use. So if you don't have deep technical skills, you can still make beautiful workflows. That's exactly right. So AppMaker, like I said, is low code. Uh, what, it, what it, the beauty of it is that you can basically, if you have an idea for an app, you can basically, con uh, we have a lot of different steps you can take, actually very few, but uh, where you connect your data model, yes. you can drag and drop UI elements yes. to make an app that looks and feels to your liking, right, and even work collaboratively on it. So it kind of takes the, the, all the pain and the, the you know, the, uh, the, the, the donkey work out of uh -huh. making an app, but basically like lets you do it in a way that's like highly declarative. Yes. So you bind your data, you connect it to the things you care about, and then you just hit publish. Publish, and then you have an app. Perfect. Uh, that you can share with your Easy way to get started. Yeah. So, leading into my next question, 
if our um, viewers were to think about getting started with AppMaker and they wanted to hear a little bit more information, where would they go? Yeah, so to get started with AppMaker, you can actually go to developers.google.com slash G Suite. And that actually lets you, um, there's a link for AppMaker as well as all of the other great tools that we have on part of the G Suite platform. So our APIs, right. extensibility frameworks, and other things that developers can, can, can use. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, I'm Mark, and we're in the Application Development Zone with Brent and Dima from the Serverless team. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what Serverless means for people in the industry. Yeah, so Serverless is a new way of building apps for the cloud or for mobile apps that really helps you be productive as a developer because all you have to worry about is writing your code. You, you deploy it to us in Google Cloud and we'll scale it for you. We will take care of networking and load balancing and all the kind of like nitty gritty infrastructure stuff. So you just can focus on like what you want your app to do, what you want your code to do. And it's great from a developer perspective because it's really easy to write apps. It's great from a business perspective because you pay only exactly for what uh, when your code is running. So if your code is stopped, if it runs for three seconds, you pay for three seconds. If it's stopped, you don't pay for anything. So super cool, uh, a really exciting way to, to start building apps in the cloud. So uh, Brett, I talked a little bit about uh, productivity that comes with serverless. And we thought that actually there's no better way to showcase ultimate serverless developer productivity but to have people actually build something and experience it for themselves. Yeah. So we've built this demo where um, uh, developers, or you don't even have to be a developer to use it, you can actually build a real application and launch it, launch it into the cloud and, uh, and, and watch it scale and interact with it. Perfect. Let's get them into it. Yep. Let's take a look. All right. Go ahead. So we have this uh, wizard going on here, and um, it walks you through the steps that uh, what it takes to create your application. Sure. And uh, we have built a um, bunch of pr preset uh, serverless microservices that you can uh, stitch together into an application that does uh, fun image processing. And um, we got to do this emojify one. Yeah, we, yeah. Let, let's do the emojify. Um, Perfect. So there, are, there. Are, what you're looking at right now is uh, is, is three microservices, and there's there's some code going on, but it really is easy to use because all you have to do um, is select a, from, from a list of uh, params. Like for example, if you want to crop your resulting picture into a circle, you can do that easily by selecting from a drop down. So let's say we reviewed all this, yep. and now we can uh, go ahead and like customize uh, the icon. So the application will, rep will be represented in the cloud with a, with a cloud icon. So you, can, uh, you, you, get, uh, you, get, you get the chance to exercise your creative muscle here and you know, um, I customize the app. I will, I'm selecting a happy face here. Yeah, we got to and, choose. Uh, we got to choose pizza there. Yes, pizza and a happy face. There, there we, we go. go. That's all how right. I feel when I eat exactly. pizza. <laughs> now all we have to do is uh, na name name our app. Uh, let's use something like next eight in here. We'll just say next uh, one, two, three. Okay. Accept, and we're ready to launch. So we're just reviewing what what, what the application is doing, and this one will replace. It, it will actually recognize faces in the image and replace them with an appropriate emoji based on the sentiment. Perfect. Uh, which, so like if you're smiling, it'll put a happy emoji over right, you, a sad, absolutely. sad emoji. All right, so we got um, a number, uh, an ID number for our application, which is uh, 0116. Yep. And that's what we will use at the next station when we launch it. So okay. let's go ahead and do it. Time to launch. 116. Yep. All right, so we're going to come over here and find our app in the list. All right, so it is ready to launch. As you can see, the red light is flashing very ominously. Let me do it. Some smoke comes off, and then we should see it up here in the screen in just a second. There All right, is. there it is. There is there, our there, happy pizza guy. There is our app. So now that it's actually deployed sort of into the cloud, we want to, we want to load test it. Because one of the things serverless does is it scales for you automatically up and down. Right. So let's actually put some input. Let's run some images by this. You can see some. Uh, some images go, and the more that go in there, the more we can see what our cloud is actually up to. And we also have the ability to send a specific image. <laughs> All right, so let me upload that. And in the meanwhile, our cloud is processing a lot of images here. So it's taking these That's, images yeah. through the process, and now you're going to upload that selfie and yeah. have it do the same process on top yeah. of that. So there are two ways to, to, to upload images. Either you can pump, pump it from here or upload through the website. So from the load test, it's just a, we have a whole bunch of images that we choose from um, to put up there. And then if you want to send a specific one, 
can do through the app. Sure. <laughs> so people here at the booth can come in and play around with this, kind of make their own applications and see serverless. Where do people go if they want to learn more? Uh, if you want to learn more about just serverless in general in Google Cloud, yeah. cloud.google.com slash serverless. It walks you through all kinds of serverless things from databases to platform as a service, functions as a service, all kinds of cool stuff to get up and running. And, and serverless is really easy to start building in the cloud with. Perfect. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks. Thanks, team. Definitely some very interesting demos at this year's conference. Be sure to stay with us to see more of the showcase later today. It's about time for the next sessions to begin. Coming up here on the next live show channel, we have the customer keynote led by Tarek Shaukat, president of Global Alliances and Industry Platforms, Google Cloud. On our other channel, tune in for a session with Cisco. We'll be back here during the break. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Next Live. I'm Red Omaya here with Stephanie Wong and special guest Greg Moore, VP of Healthcare at Google Cloud. Greg, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Now, we've just heard from Tariq Shaukat and several business leaders from a variety of industries, but let's spend some time talking specifically about healthcare. We talked a lot today about how Google is building a cloud for everyone. Now, how is Google Cloud helping people specifically building for the healthcare industry? Yeah, great question. Earlier this year, we announced the Google Cloud Healthcare API to address some very significant interoperability challenges in healthcare. Just today, we announced we're taking that from Early Access Program and launching that into the Alpha Program. This allows healthcare systems, large life sciences companies, to actually ingest and manage healthcare data at scale to solve some of the most complex problems and challenges in healthcare. Very excited about this. Yeah, that's fantastic. It sounds really exciting. Yeah, it is. How do you really see our machine learning and artificial intelligence solutions revolutionizing the space in healthcare? Yeah, machine learning and artificial intelligence, you know, it's really, the potential is really unlimited. I'm super excited about this being a position in healthcare and seeing the impact it can make. You know, initially this is going to be impact workflows that providers, uh, physicians are engaged in every day, whether that's just filling a prescription or writing a prescription or dictating a note. Perhaps even more exciting as we move forward, um, it's thinking about analyzing and evaluating large, complex data sets in, that are available clinically or even images and, and flagging those areas of concern for a physician so they can properly evaluate that and in the end have more time with their patients face to face. Yeah, absolutely, and that's kind of what it's all about, right? Giving physicians that opportunity to you know, think more quickly and be able to work more closely with their patients. Yeah, indeed, it's, it's about you know, improving their workflow and giving them time back with their patients. So there's a lot of really exciting things described in today's keynote for a lot of industries. I'm really interested to know from your perspective, what's the most exciting thing you heard about today for people working within the healthcare industry? Yeah, that's an easy one for me. Super excited about Diane's announcement uh, today about Google Cloud's partnership with the NIH. You know, biomedical research data continues to grow. In fact, it's growing exponentially, whether that's genomic or imaging data or other types of clinical data sets. Uh, our partnership today with the NIH allows Google Cloud together with the NIH to create access to biomedical research data for scientists and physicians globally and to do so with appropriate privacy controls. You know, I'm most excited that, um, you know, as we look forward, this will really facilitate helping researchers, physicians in accelerate the pace of their research to find cures, treatments for some of the most devastating diseases of our time. And to be a part of that is just an just amazing opportunity for Google Cloud together with NIH. Absolutely, I mean there's so much data that's being collected and that's required to do some of this research, so it's amazing to be able to be a part of making that available for people yeah, to use. Yeah, indeed, and that's why we're so excited to partner with the NIH in this important. With all work. of this explosive data, it seems like such an important and exciting time that Google Cloud can make an impact in the industry. How do you think our focus, specifically in the healthcare industry, is going to really um, move the industry forward? Sure. Um, you know, Google's making massive investments in healthcare, and we're doing that in Google Cloud in, in particular. So whether it's a, in Google Cloud Platform, enabling interoperability and allowing small companies that are innovating this, in this space to large companies change their workflows and to go through the digital transformation. We've taught Google Cloud the healthcare language 
um, if you will, to, to understand healthcare data sets in their native format and to be able to innovate there. Then as I uh, you know, go through, I think about G Suite. I'm seeing incredible adoption of G Suite that's now HIPAA compliant um, across there. So we see um, large healthcare systems, for, for example, Leahy Clinic that recently brought 15,000 of their employees onto G Suite into a HIPAA compliant um, collaborative and productivity um, tool there. I, I look at Chrome, which is an amazing opportunity that's growing, also growing at a tremendous rate that brings secure workstations and a secure operating system you know, to the healthcare community that it didn't have before and to do so in a cost-effective way. And I'm perhaps most excited about how we're partnering with the healthcare and life sciences community uh, to enable them you know, to bring, whether it's genomic workflows or imaging workflows um, uh, and a variety of other clinical data sets and to be able to power that with Google Cloud to help them on their transformation and innovation journey. Ultimately, to provide better outcomes for patients um, and better um, workflows for providers um, and, and everyone in the ecosystem. So super excited about what work we're doing in healthcare. And I think that's what I always find the most exciting is when we can take the amazing technology that exists here and enable people who are already doing amazing things and make them make it easier and faster and cheaper for them to achieve those goals. Indeed, that's, that's what, why we're all here and that's what we're excited about. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much for giving us your time today. We really appreciate it. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity today. Really appreciate it. Of course. Now let's head over to the showcase to check out a few demos and installations. Hi, I'm Natalie and we're here in the Industry Solutions Zone and we're going to be focusing on healthcare and life sciences and today I'm joined by Jonathan who's going to be starting by telling us a little bit about how Google Cloud is helping industries in healthcare and life sciences. Yeah, thanks so much Natalie. Hi everyone. So there's three ways in which Google Cloud is helping the healthcare and life sciences industry. You can think about it in terms of consumer, clinical and research. So if you stop by the pavilion this week, you'll see SoulCycle and Weight Watchers, how they're leveraging Google Cloud in order to build their businesses. Uh, you'll also see what we're doing to help in the clinical space. I've got a demo I can share with you today. Yes. And we're also helping in the research space. Um, as you might have seen in Diane Green's keynote, uh, today we announced our partnership with the NIH, where we'll be making many of the most important biomedical data sets available on Google Cloud for free to researchers. Why don't we start by walking over to the deploying healthcare using AI applications in the cloud. So tell us a little bit about this demonstration. Sure, yeah, so in this demo, we're actually able to show how Google Cloud helps radiologists diagnose bone age more easily. This is a process that actually, in the old days, took 20, 25 minutes searching through a paper book in order to make the diagnosis. I'm gonna show you how we do it on Google Cloud. So let's take a look at Joe. Joe's a 10 year old patient and he's a little shorter than some of his uh, classmates. And Joe's parents are concerned. They want to get a bone scan. They want to know uh, whether he's developing normally. So first our de-identification API is masking the important data for the research purposes. And then it's scanning through and identifying the relative bone age of the patient. And based on this age, the patient's development is actually a little slower than some of their peers and the follow-up recommendation is for the patient to see an endocrinologist to see whether there might be anything wrong. So we've taken a process that normally takes 20, 25 yeah, minutes, and it crazy. happens in seconds. So yeah. this is just one of the ways in which Google Cloud is helping doctors in the clinic today to diagnose their patients quickly and more accurately. I'm interested in asking what's next in yeah. healthcare and life sciences. Do you have any kind of special um, you know, launches that you're having at next? Can you tell us about those? Yeah, I'd love to. So uh, this week, the, uh, the healthcare API went to Alpha, which we're really excited about. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your time. This has been you know, one of my favorite uh, sections in health and life sciences. So really appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us, Jonathan. Thanks so much, Natalie. Enjoy the show. We're here at the Industry Solution Zone talking about retail. Can you tell me a little bit about some of the installations that you have, maybe some of the demonstrations? Yeah, we have a variety of uh, demos in the retail showcase uh, at Next this year uh, that touch different parts of the retail value chain. Uh, for example, we start off with uh, customer acquisition. How can you leverage advanced analytics tools from Google Cloud to target and acquire the right customer? So we have demos that showcase that. 
We have demos that showcase different parts of an omni-channel experience, how to uh, connect with the customer, whether it's in-store or online, and surface the right products at the right time to those customers. We're also uh, uh, you know, pulling, the cur pulling the curtains uh, and looking behind uh, things like supply chain. So we have partners that are demonstrating a real-time inventory solution uh, and really being able to track inventory at the shelf level. And then finally, we're looking at uh, future technologies that might be more prevalent with things like conversational commerce. How can voice-activated uh, experiences yeah. really come into the day-to-day uh, you know, -day, uh, experiences that retailers can provide their customers? So we have a variety of solutions, both built by Google uh, Cloud as well as by our partners like AppSpace, mm -hmm. Trax Retail, and SAP. Awesome. So hopefully this has enticed our listeners to want to learn a little bit more about what Google Cloud is doing in retail. Where should they go to hear more? We have a number of sessions that are retail specific throughout Next, so I encourage you to, to uh, look through the agenda and find those sessions that are interesting to you. Please do stop by our showcase and we have uh, different information here we can provide you as well in terms of what you can experience as a retailer at Next 18. And a website link to go to? Would be cloud.google.com slash solutions and look for the retail section. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Showcase team. Coming up next, we have some spotlight sessions coming your way. Here on the next live show, Serverless Cloud, and over on the featured Spotlight Sessions channel, we've got bringing you the future of cloud. Welcome back to The Next Live Show. I'm Stephanie Wong. Our next story shows us how G Suite and Chromebooks are changing how students learn in a remote part of the Amazon. I'm very curious. I ask everything. My name is Rayandra. I'm 12 years old. I work in the village of São Pedro, mais conhecida como Timbó. Ele é uma vila bem pequena, mas também todo mundo é unido. Eu quero seguir o espaço do meu pai. Ele cuida das pessoas que são doentes. Eu gosto de vir aqui para a escola porque eu aprendo mais e quero ser médica. Nossos alunos andam mais de meia hora para pegar a canoa ou o motor. A casa eles moram é simples, de madeira, mas as pessoas querem mesmo melhor para os seus filhos, né? É os mais interessados em aprender. Eu acho que eles são os guerreiros. No ano passado, a gente recebeu esse Chromebook, né? mas foi muito bom para o nosso aprendizado. Quando foi introduzido o computador para eles, ficaram muito entusiasmadas. Vocês sabem quem foi a primeira médica mulher do Brasil? É interessante que a gente pode mexer no tradutor, ver quem foi que inventou a primeira vacina, o primeiro avião, a primeira bicicleta. O Amazonas mais conectado vai trazer melhoria na formação do cidadão. As comunidades elas vão ficar mais informadas e atualizadas. Quando eu virar uma médica, eu vou voltar para o Timbó e vou ajudar todo mundo. Porque eu acho que é muito bonito cuidar das pessoas. A really inspiring story on how technology is opening doors for students all over the world. Okay, now let's check in with Mark at the showcase for a demo on primary education and higher learning. Mark, what do you have for us? Thanks, Rado. We're here at the Industry Solutions Zone where I'm with the Google for Education team and Tia. Hi, thanks so much for inviting us on the show. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit more about what Google for Education does. Yeah, so there's over 80 million educators and students that use Google for Education in virtually every country around the world. They're using the tools because it helps them save time and be more productive, mm -hmm. helps them collaborate really effectively, and really to create and invent things that we couldn't even have imagined you know, would even be possible. Such as these robotic hands, right? Yeah, exactly. This is a great example. So in K through 12 education, mm -hmm. there's over 30 million students using Google Classroom to collaborate and over 25 million using Chromebooks like these. And Chromebooks um, are extremely affordable and shareable devices. So it really increases 
the ability to bring world-class computing to all students, not just to a few. This is a nice example of what's possible. Students here, for example, at Leiden High School and many others are actually using Chromebooks and web-based tools to literally program prosthetic limbs and to 3D print them and to actually get them in real use by a real person. There's a lot of other examples here today as well of what students are doing with the power of these tools. Mm -hmm. So at High Tech High and many other places, students actually start their own businesses with G Suite and Chromebooks, using the tools to collaborate, make their business plans, and engage community members. Another great example is uh, the students in Charlotte's, Charlottesville School District. They actually were able to use Chromebooks to program something that went up on the International Space Station. They were part of one of MIT's robotics competitions. And so their work is actually happening live up there in space. That's fantastic. And so there's also some stories about higher education too, right? Yes, higher education, the tools are really widely adopted too, especially G Suite for Education and Google Cloud Platform. And there's really three areas where these tools can help institutions be transformational. One area is in administration. You know, this could be powering the infrastructure in a really easy, seamless way. Manhattan College has seen huge benefits where because they're using GCP, they know things are secure and it's freeing up their time to do more of what they want to be doing, which is supporting their faculty. Another area is in teaching and learning. We offer free credits for Google Cloud Platform, and that means that for absolutely free, the future computer scientists and engineers and business leaders can use these tools and they can unlock all the potential. Finally, the third area where higher education is really benefiting from the Google tools is in research. And we all know that so many of the things in our lives that make us be happy, healthy people are coming out of the research that's being done in these academic institutions. So genomics research, an area where there's huge data sets, these researchers can, can crunch data so much more quickly and critically collaboratively. That's what a lot of the researchers tell us is one of the biggest benefits. It's because they're working across institutions, they're sharing, and GCP really allows them to share with each other seamlessly. Honestly, the researchers can dream things up that we could never even imagine, so we're excited to see what stories you know, come out of the coming year. Absolutely. It sounds like it covers all facets, too. Yeah. So where can people go if they want to learn more? Yes, if people want to learn more, it would be great for them to check out our website. That's edu.google.com. And of course, if they're lucky enough to be here at Next, to come by our showcase on the second floor of Moscone West. Fantastic. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, thanks very much. That does it for us today on Next Live. Day one is done and dusted. But we've got plenty more for you tomorrow. Join us for day two on the next live show. We kick the day off with the main keynote, Bringing the Cloud to You, followed by the spotlight session, Transforming Work. Turing Award winners John Hennessy, Chairman of Alphabet, and David Patterson, Distinguished Engineer at Google, will share their insightful perspectives on technology. Our customer keynote series continues with more business and tech leaders discussing how the cloud is transforming their businesses. And we'll have spotlight sessions on rethinking big data analytics and cloud AI. On the featured Spotlight Sessions channel, we'll have sessions from Deloitte and Accenture, followed by sessions on security and trust, cloud native development with SAP, and Google Cloud's vision of IoT. And join us tomorrow on g.co slash nextonair, starting at 8.45 a.m. Pacific time, for all of this and more from the showcase floor, plus special guest interviews. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone. See you tomorrow.